All right, let's take a look at irrigation and methods of irrigation in the subject WRE one. Okay, it is the number four unit in your syllabus. All right. So the definition is saying irrigation is the artificial application of water to the land or soil. Means when the rainfall is insufficient, the sources of water are not close to the farmland or to the soil which needs to be. Grown which needs to be cultivated with plants or crop is not having abundant rainfall or sufficient rainfall. Let's say then what we are doing we are providing irrigation water. Irrigation water let's say just irrigation. We are making provision of irrigation over there in order to have the growth of crop or the growth of plant over there. The artificial application is called as irrigation. the man made application of water the man made provision of water for the growth of plant for the growth of crops is called as irrigation this is what the technical definition of irrigation simply artificial application of water to the soil or land now what are the advantages or what is the purpose of having irrigation it is used to assist the growth of crop in farm and maintenance of landscape and revegetation of disturbed soil in dry areas and during periods of inadequate rainfall in order to reclaim a land which has gone barren we can have irrigation over there so that the land can be reclaimed the land can again grow some plants or some crops okay let's move to the next topic which is necessity of irrigation why we are providing irrigation what is the need of providing irrigation for some area for a specific region see the very first point the first and the foremost thing you should remember that whenever a area is hit with low rainfall intensities or low rainfall quantities we are having the irrigation established over there means insufficient rainfall is the first reason behind having irrigation okay irrigation is provided when rainfall is scanty rainfall is less intensity is less okay then uneven distribution of rainfall means intense rainfall is okay rainfall is there but its intensity its distribution may be there okay for example in the orographic precipitation you might be remembering that the rain shadow region okay the region of land which is behind the mountain doesn't get any water therefore a reason may be there that uneven distribution of rainfall may be there okay then improvement of perennial crop perennial crop means we can cultivate we can have crop or plants throughout the length of year throughout the span of year means we can have our crop cultivation throughout the year 365 days total means we do not have to rely on the rainy season for the growth of crop therefore we can have improved perennial crop by providing irrigation okay this is the third point and development of agriculture in desert area see it is a nearly not possible to have crop to have plants in a desert area but by some means if we take water over there if we cultivate some land over there if we take useful soil over there and if we provide irrigation over there then we can develop agriculture in even desert areas okay this is the point number 4 so what are the benefits of irrigation increase in crop yield means overall production of crop increases when we are providing the water artificially then protection from famine famine means lack of food lack of water lack of overall production of agriculture is called as what famine okay the protection from famine can be given by irrigation okay then cultivation of superior crop the crop that require more water content more moisture content for their growth can be assured with the help of irrigation only means we can irrigate the lands in order to have the superior crops okay then elimination of mixed cropping see throughout the span of year okay only at the time of rainfall only at the time of rainy season the better crops can be cultivated means the main crop regarding that soil for example uh, cotton in black cotton soil can be taken when the rainfall is sufficient means only when rain water is there we are having that dependency on that specific four months of the year but when we are ha having the water supplies throughout the year we can eliminate the mixed crop means mixed cropping means taking two or three multiple crops depending on what kind of what amount of rain water we are receiving okay means we can eliminate the 
ओल्ड फैशन मिक्स क्रॉपिंग थिंग एंड वी कैन हैव द मैक्सिमम कल्टिवेशन ऑफ सुपीरियर क्रॉप थ्रू आउट द ईयर वेन वी आर हैविंग इरीगेशन ओके देन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दैट रीजन ऑफ दैट विलेज ऑफ दैट सिटी ऑफ दैट स्टेट ऑफ दैट नेशन विल टेक प्लेस ओनली वेन आर्टिफिशियल सप्लाईज ऑफ वॉटर दैट इज इरीगेशन विल बी प्रोवाइडेड ओवर देयर then hydropower generation obviously when we are talking about irrigation we are talking about dam project reservoir project bandhara is there bandh is there all the things are there means we can store water and we can later use it for crop cultivation and along with crop cultivation what we can have we can have hydropower generation over there we can get a canal we can separate out a canal and on that canal along the slope of the canal we can have a hydroelectric power plant and that's why hydroelectric power generation can also be taken can also be produce over there okay hydroelectric power can also be produced on the same theme of irrigation okay then domestic and industrial water supply now see when irrigation is there when dam is there when canals are there a good network of canals is there it will not be limited for farming it will not be limited for agriculture purposes it will be having its due benefits for domestic and industrial water supply as well therefore this is the another added benefit of irrigation okay this hydropower generation and domestic and industrial water supply are the added benefits the extra benefits of irrigation indirect benefits of irrigation now whichever thing you say has its good side and the bad side okay the pros and the cons okay therefore we are now looking at ill effects of irrigation means what are the bad effect because of irrigation rising of water table for example ground water table is there okay and because of irrigation continuous ponding of water will be taking place continuous storage of water will be taking place that's why what is going to happen the overall water table for example this is the ground layer we are talking about okay uh, okay let's have blue pen over here so ground water table will be there and because of continuous ponding of water this water will be percolating itself through the soil layer and the growth the increase in ground water table will take place and this leads to the formation of marshy land marshy land means the land which is continuously ponded with water and thus the overall soil level the soil quality gets deteriorated and marshy land forms over there okay marathi jala dal dal manta okay dampness in weather the overall moisture level in the atmosphere is going to increase okay and since moisture level is increasing it invites some kind of diseases okay the growth of mosquitoes will be there the growth of insect will be there means overall the ecological balance that was previously in that area is going to get deteriorated then loss of valuable land see when irrigation is there dam is going to be there dam is going to be constructed then canal uh, network will need to be established over there okay and all these appurtenances the con the all the joint ventures that are coming with irrigation canals are there uh, then dams are there land will be required for uh, construction of and uh, establishment of reservoir will be there ponds will be there okay for all these appurtenances we are going to require land and many times it happens that the canal needs to be laid down through someone's farm okay that specific farmer is going to suffer because of the irrigation but uh, see we need to take a look at the wider aspect of irrigation irrigation brings development irrigation brings more cultivation irrigation brings overall overall economic development that's why instead of looking at this three to four ill effects we need to look at the bright side of irrigation okay now let's see what the next topic is okay now methods of irrigation the first one is surface irrigation then subsurface irrigation sprinkler and trickle irrigation okay first one we are going to take a look at surface irrigation and in surface irrigation there are four to five methods which is uncontrolled flooding method then border strip method then basin method then furrow method okay now let's take a look at surface irrigation methods okay 
what surface irrigation is saying in all the surface methods of irrigation water is either ponded means stock on the soil or allowed to flow continuously over the soil for surface for the duration of irrigation means we are literally letting the water flow over the land which needs to be irrigated okay it does not result in high levels of perforum obviously we are just wildly we are just uncontrolled uh, in uncontrolled manner we are letting the water flow over the land that's why it will not properly percolate in the soil it will not reach to the roots of the plant properly and most of the part will be evaporated back to the atmosphere that's why it does not result in high level of performance okay this is mainly because uncertain infiltration rates yes we just talked this uh, talked about this that the water will not be percolated properly the water will not be getting retained inside the soil properly which are affected by year to year changes in cropping pattern cultivation practices climate factor and many other factor means the wild flooding method is prone to many disadvantage because of the change in cropping pattern change in type of crop change in amount of crop then cultivation practices of that region of that state of that country then climate factor of that region and there are many other factor that are going to affect the surface irrigation efficiency then uncontrolled flooding is there when water is applied to the crop land without any preparation of land means the land will not be flowed properly there will not be any grooves uh, that will be guiding the water for the entry in the farmland and without any levees mean without any border to guide or restrict the flow means there will not be any control established on the water which is being provided to the farmland okay this method is called as uncontrolled wild or free flooding okay uncontrolled flooding generally result in excess irrigation obviously you are not having control over there you are not having any proper regulation for flow of water over there there is no bordering there is no proper channelizing system that's why what is going to happen the water which is flowing inside the farm will cause will cause just flooding of water over there okay ponding will take place no proper irrigation is going to take place efficiency of the irrigation is going to reduce because of deep percolation or flowing away of water from the field see there are two chances either the farmland for example this is the level of farm we are talking about and in some region if the depression is there water is going to get collected in that zone and deep percolation will take place and if the what if the land is too much leveled if the land is perfectly flat the water is going to flow away it will not percolate below so that the plants will be availing the benefit of irrigated water okay this is the problem with respect to uncontrolled flooding so now we are looking at the border strip method okay now in border strip method or the border strip irrigation we are providing a control a channelized manner in order to flood the farm okay means in uncontrolled farming method the problem was with ponding and there was no control over the quantity and quality of irrigation but in border strip irrigation or simply border irrigation we are having borders we are having strips inside the farm that are going to properly channelize the water to go inside the farm to properly irrigate the plants okay now the border strip method is suited to soil of moderately low to moderately high intake rate and low erodibility erodibility means the extent of erosion okay for example if you just let a water quantity flow in the farm and what will happen if the slope is there okay if the steep slope is there then the water will be carrying along with the soil particle in the farm means low erodibility should be there in order to have the uncontrolled flooding method or the border strip method otherwise the loss of soil is going to take place the loss of useful soil is going to take place when you are carrying out such methods of irrigation this method however requires preparation of land exactly obviously when you are saying that you need to have some channels some grooves over there some border or some strips over there then you need to first prepare the farm prior to the irrigation practices then and only then you can properly establish the border strip method irrigation over there okay this is how the border strip irrigation method looks on the upper strips what we have done we have planted the crops okay and the channels the grooves the the borders means in between the border the water is allowed to flow okay the water will drip itself the water is going to percolate itself in the layers of soil and then the plants which are planted on the border the strips are going to avail the available water okay so let's see 
चेक मेथड सी द चेक मेथड ऑफ इरीगेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन रैपिड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इरीगेशन वाटर टू अ लेवल और नियरली लेवल एरिया कंप्लीटली एनक्लोज बाय डाइक्स सिंपली लेट से इफ यू आर हैविंग अ फार्म लैंड लाइक दिस देन द होल एरिया इज गोइंग टू गेट distributed into grid okay and this specific grid will be watered means will be irrigated and each grid is provided with some certain amount of same level of water okay because of this grid the water distribution okay the water distribution the water quantity the water level the water quality all the things are going to be in control okay see this is how the check irrigation is taking place the grids are there and the grids are having some opening each grid having some opening and through the main canal inside the farm okay through the filled canal the grids are filled up with water okay the grids are getting filled up with water this is how check irrigation takes place then basin method see basin method the as the name is suggesting there will be a basin obviously the name is basin method there will be a basin and inside the basin the plant the crop that needs to be cultivated is planted okay the plant is sown in one single basin one single plant is sown and this specific method is useful for fruit bearing plants okay for apple for mangoes for chikus all the fruit bearing plants have their best uh, irrigation advantage when we are carrying out the basin method for them okay because it is not possible for small crops to have a single basin and single crop sown into that basin okay means for the plants for the crops when the distance required in between the two plants is more the basin method can be suitably availed over there okay then the furrow method is there in this method we distribute some small channel inside the farm itself in order to have water be flowing inside the farmland okay this small channel are termed as furrows or creases or corrugations in the diagram it will be clear see small strips are made available for carrying of water carriage of water and the major strips are allocated for planting for cultivation for sowing the plants okay this is what furrow method then subsurface irrigation subsurface irrigation or simply which is called as sub irrigation is the practice of applying water to soil directly under the surface moisture do reach the plant roots through capillary action the condition which favor sub irrigation are as follow see what are the requirements of availing subsurface irrigation impervious subsoil at a depth of 2 meter or more the soil at the depth of 2 meter should be impervious okay then a very permeable permeable subsoil means the upper layer should be very permeable then a permeable loam or sandy loam surface soil then uniform topographic condition and moderate ground slope means the steep slope will not be useful when we are going for subsurface irrigation okay now let's see what subsurface irrigation methods are the first one is sprinkler irrigation okay it is the method of applying water to the soil surface in form of spray which is somewhat similar to rain means having a artificial rain at a very small height inside the farm itself is the method of irrigation of sprinkler irrigation okay rotating sprinkler sprinkler head system are commonly used for sprinkler irrigation okay the sprinkler not only rotated along the axis but also change the intensity of throw okay means for example this is the sprinkler we are talking about then it will be having its spray it will be having its sprinkle along the area that it is going to cover okay each rotating sprinkler head sprinkler head applies water to a given area size of which is governed by the nozzle size and the water pressure more the water pressure more will be the throw of sprinkler okay then alternatively perforated pipe can be used to deliver water through a very small hole which are drilled at close interval along a segment of the circumference of the pipe okay either you can have pin holes on the pipe itself or you can have a nozzle system that is going to cause artificial rain like simulation in the farm itself okay sprinkler have been used on all types of soil on lands of different topography and slopes and for many crops the following conditions are favorable for sprinkler irrigation okay the required condition for having sprinkler irrigation are very pervious soil which do not permit good distribution of water by surface method then land which have steep slope and easily erodible soils 
देन इरीगेशन चैनल विच आर टू स्मॉल टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट वाटर इफिशियंटली बाय सर्फेस इरीगेशन एंड लैंड्स विच शैलो सॉइल एंड अंडुलेटिंग लैंड विच प्रिवेंट प्रॉपर लेवलिंग रिक्वायर्ड फॉर सर्फेस मेथड ऑफ इरीगेशन सी वॉट एवर द मेथड्स ऑफ इरीगेशन वी सॉ प्रीवियसली आर टोटली अनसुटेबल फॉर द कंडीशन विच आर गिवन फॉर स्प्रिंकलर इरीगेशन ओके स्प्रिंकलर इरीगेशन इज द ओनली वन दैट कैन वर्क इन इरोडेबल सॉइल ऑल्सो ऑन स्लोप ऑल्सो ऑन सॉइल विच आर मोर प्रोन टू गेट इरोडेड ओके एंड द सॉइल विच आर हैविंग देयर लो थिकनेस ओके विच आर नॉट हैविंग द थिकनेस ऑफ प्रॉपर लेवल ओके सो लेट सी द डायग्राम द पंप provides the water to the sprinkler irrigation system and the pump creates the pressure so that the sprinkler the sprinkler nozzle can properly distribute the water to the farmland okay the pressure control valve can is there the nozzle ejects the water and the rotary rotary action of the nozzle make sure that all the area near the sprinkler head all the area near the sprinkler head properly gets the water okay but the problems are still there when when we are saying that even in erodible soil even on steep slope we can have sprinkler irrigation but still there are a problem with sprinkler irrigation that we are going to see in next slides advantage let's first see the bright side low water loss okay whatever the water is sprinkled on the land totally reaches to the roots of the plant okay totally gets percolated in the effective soil area then saving in fertilizer we can, yes this is the another added advantage of mixing the fertilizer in the water itself the water which is meant to be sprinkled over the farm is mixed first in the water tank okay the source of water is mixed with fertilizer or pesticide or both the things okay then we can spray the water means the water drop each water droplet will be carrying the fertilizer which reaches the root of plant okay the fertilizer doesn't get wasted when we are spraying it manually on the farmland okay then it is suitable for any topography any kind of land any kind of slope it is very much suitable then the sprinkling effect the rainwater simulation effect do not cause any soil erosion even if the soil is erodible what will happen the water droplet will be causing some impact on the soil and thus the soil will be getting compacted on the specific area means it will not flow away in case when we were providing the uncontrolled flooding kind of irrigation uh, irrigation type okay then better seed germination and free aeration of root zone see because of this natural simulation of rainwater the germination of seed is better okay and pre aeration of root zone takes place because the compacting the impacting water droplet are going to cause the aeration along the root zone then uniform application of water yes if you properly program if you properly design the sprinkler irrigation system then you can have uniform application of water in your farmland okay now let's see the dark side yes high initial cost the pump the tank the total setup the total pipes the total uh, uh, lining up the total channelization of the whole system is kind of labor some is kind of cumbersome and it puts strain on the budget of the farmer means it is not affordable for ordinary farmer okay poor application efficiency in wind weather yes when wind uh, is there when prevailing winds are there when high strength of wind is there the wind is going to cause loss in efficient uh, loss in the efficiency of sprinkled water because the wind will be carrying away all the water which is being sprinkled over the farmland and high temperature yes when the temperature is high the soil underneath will be heating and now when you are talking about sprinkling water on the such hot soil the the instant the water touches the soil it is going to get evaporated that's why high temperature and strong wind is a enemy of sprinkler water system sprinkler water irrigation system high evaporation losses yes in summer season if you carry out this practice if you carry out this uh, artificial rain simulator or simply the sprinkle irrigation system then evaporation is definitely will be there then water should be free of debris yes whatever the water you are storing in the storing in the tank for the application of 
water or application of irrigation water to the plant the water should be perfectly pure also we talked about mixing the fertilizer then the fertilizer also need to be mixed properly so that there will not be any precipitate or there will not be any hard particle that will get stuck in the sprinkler system if the particle is getting stuck in the nozzle of the sprinkler the nozzle is not going to work that's why the efficiency that specific zone will get dried out okay then physical damage to the crop by application of high intensity spray yes this thing needs to be controlled means when we are talking about high pressure pump in order to deliver the water through the nozzle then we need to take care that the pressure should be maintained such that it will not be impacting the root zone or it will not be impacting the overall zone of plant okay otherwise delicate plant delicate crops are going to get impacted they are going to get hurt because of the application of high intensity spray so this was sprinkler irrigation and we saw the method the advantages and the disadvantages for next we are having trickle or drip irrigation jala marathi madhe thibak sinchan ase mantat so trickle irrigation system comprises of main line sub mains lateral wall in order to control the flow then drippers or emitters pressure gauges water meter filter pumps fertilizer tank vacuum pressure pressure regulator got so on there are so many components in the trickle drip irrigation therefore we can predict the thing that it is not a budget friendly thing okay for ordinary farmer trickle irrigation or drip irrigation or the sprinkle irrigation is kind of out of budget thing but in case of trickle irrigation if the proper maintenance is taken then the only thing which is there that the initial budget the initial costing will be there and the lifelong maintenance is low if you properly plan out if you properly program this trickle or drip irrigation but for sure initial budget of both the things trickle irrigation and the sprinkler irrigation is very high okay the drippers are designed to supply water at the desired rate 1 to 10 liters per hour directly to the soil low pressure heads at the emitter are considered adequate as the soil capillary forces cause the emitted water to spread laterally and vertically yes what is there in trickle or drip irrigation for example this is the farmland we are talking about and very near to the farmland or or over the farmland itself there will be pipes okay and pipes will be having some tiny holes and through the tiny holes water continuously drip very near to the crop itself that's why the pressure required in case of trickle trickle or uh, drip irrigation is low as compared to the sprinkler irrigation okay then okay yes this is the line sketch of typical drip irrigation system check wall is there gate wall is there and filter is there yes filter is required because if filter is not there the problem will be that a specific hole inside the pipe of this drip irrigation system will get choked up and it will cause the total stoppage the total halt of the total halting of the irrigation and thus it will cause drying out of of the total zone which is it is uh, meant to be supplied with water okay then advantages yes low water loss obviously we are directly taking a drop of water to the root zone of plant that's why the required water quantity is very much less than whatever the previous method we saw okay then yes it will save water then enhances plant growth and plant yield since we are talking about delivering the water droplet at the very root zone of plants we are enhancing the plant growth and overall efficiency of plant overall cultivation will be good then it is saving labor and energy yes there is one time investment it is there one time programming one time designing one time laying installation is there and you have to reap the benefits for so long time that's why it is going to save labor and energy as well then control weed growth yes the excess of water is not spreading on the another other areas of the farmland that's why water will not be wasted first thing and the excess water which is unavailable in this case will not cause any extra growth of undesirable plants in the farmland okay no soil erosion see no pressure is there no uh, sprinkling is there no uncontrolled flooding is there we are talking about drop by drop irrigation here that's why erosion chances are very much less 
इट इम्प्रूव द फर्टिलाइजर एप्लीकेशन इफिशियंस येस वेन वी आर मिक्सिंग द फर्टिलाइजर एंड एंड और पेस्टिसाइड इन द टैंक विच इज गोइंग टू सप्लाई द वॉटर थ्रू दिस ड्रिप इरीगेशन सिस्टम इट विल बी कैरिंग अ सिंगल ड्रॉप विच इज फुल ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर टू द रूट जोन मीन्स देर विल नॉट बी वेस्टेज ऑफ द फर्टिलाइजर ओके दैट्स वाई इट विल रिजल्ट इन टू इम्प्रूव फर्टिलाइजर एप्लीकेशन इफिशियंसी All right, the dark side of drip irrigation. High skill in design, installation, and subsequent operation. Yes, high budget, high finance, high skill, high uh, skill in installation and subsequent operation. The farmer needs to be trained regarding the maintenance of this drip irrigation, or also in the case of sprinkler irrigation, the pro the programming, the proper channelizing, the whole system needs to be learned by the farmer in order to have the system run smoothly in his farmland. Then, clogging of small conduits and opening. Okay, if the nozzles are getting clogged with particle of sand or clay or any debris, let's say, what is going to happen? That specific nozzle is going to get choked, and the surrounding plants are going to get dried up, and the farmer needs to continuously inspect, supervise the nozzle. for any blockage okay then not suitable for closely planted crops such as wheat and other cereal grains see it is not suitable when the plants when the crop is meant to be sown very in a very close proximity to each other okay at that case free flooding check flooding or other method of uh, irrigation are suitable or even sprinkler method is suitable but not specifically this drip irrigation is suitable then let's talk about quality of irrigation water how irrigation water should be ideal irrigation water should be how it should be it should not have direct or indirect undesirable effect on the health of human being animals and plants means the water that we are supplying to plant should be safe for ingestion of plants as well as animals as well as human beings then irrigation water must not damage the soil okay it should be safe for the soil also it should not endanger the quality of surface and ground water with which it comes into contact see if you are mixing too much mineral if you are mixing too much fertilizer in the irrigation water then what is going to happen all the minerals which are present in the irrigation water are going to drip down are going to the ground water level by the with the help of capillary action and all the mineral are going to get mixed with the ground water and ground water has its own composition and when you are artificially mixing some mineral the overall balance of the ground water nature is going to get disturbed okay that's why the irrigation water should be safe for plants animals human also the soil and also the ground water table which is present in the farmland then presence of toxic substance yes it should it should not contain any toxicity at all it should not be poisonous it should not be toxic okay then surface water ground water and suitably treated waste water are generally used for irrigation purpose okay uh, we can also have properly treated waste water okay if you are talking about uh, growing tomatoes or cabbages uh, or let's say spinach then the best growth you can observe when you are providing a properly treated waste water okay they will grow in abundance when you are providing waste water only okay the various types of impurities which make the water unfit for irrigation okay what irrigation water should not contain irrigation water should not contain any sediment concentration then any soluble salt should not be present because when you are mix when you are observing that soluble salts are present in the irrigation water then after some years when you are continuously applying such water for farming in a land then the crust of salt will take place on the farmland and thus it is going to render the whole farmland barren then the proportion of sodium ions to other ions see sodium ion if it is present in abundance means salt if are if they are present in abundance in such irrigation water then they are going to form some other else compound and these compounds may not be suitable to the crop to the soil and to the ground water which is present below the surface concentration of potentially toxic element c toxins should be absent then bacterial contamination it should be free from any harmful any bacteria okay so uh, this was ashwin pand your teacher uh, we just talked about the methods of irrigation and the advantages and disadvantage of irrigation so we will meet in some next lecture we will cover some else unit till then take care stay home stay safe